What up, fam? Hit that like, hit that subscribe. This is Agree to Disagree. Talking Eagles with you. It's over. Welcome in, everybody. This is Agree to Disagree. It's the Eagles post-game show here on HUD Radio. As always, we're usually on Sundays, but a little, you know, we decided, hey, we'll come on Monday after the game, recap it. We were hoping for something better. But as always, Greg Mwagvik, Nick Del Gazzo, I'm Tom Arnone. No Brian Wilson tonight. Everybody out there, welcome in. We are brought to you by our doc. Make them yours. Dr. Paul Vidal, Specialized Physical Therapy, LLC. Locations in Burlington, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Find them on the web, specializedphysicaltherapy.com. We got a lot to go over. All right. We're going to get into all of it because we're going to have to talk about what we'll do a crumb in a week. We do that every show. We'll dive into the game that we just watched. But obviously, we're going to get into things deeper than that. We're going to go further. We're going to go, you know, we're going to try to get it. We're getting into the offseason. It's over. It's time. And we have a lot of decisions, a lot of question marks. I mean, this is unbelievable. This was a team that was in the Super Bowl a year ago. This time last year, we were rocking and rolling around here. Yes. I mean, this is a disgrace, and it's on a lot of people. And we're going to get into who it's on and everybody else, at, you know, as we go on and right into our poll question. And our poll question brought to you Babagio's bread, located in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Home of the best stuffed bread sandwiches, cutlets, meatballs. You mentioned A2D Radio. 10% off your order. Our poll for tonight. Let's talk about it, baby. Jalen Hurts is the biggest reason for the Eagles' end of season collapse. Ooh. Do you agree or disagree? Let us know. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, that's where we're live. Everywhere you get your podcast, we're there as well. Hit the like, subscribe, follow. Most importantly, join the conversation. We're going to read off as much as we can. You know how we do it. Chris Kaufman already. Thanks for the super chat, brother. He said, How does a professional team not know how to throw a slam pass? Yeah. I, it, listen, man, we're going to get it all into it. There's a lot of question marks, Chris. There really is. It's a disgrace. I mean, Jalen Hurts is the biggest reason for the Eagles end the season collapse. If you agree, disagree, let us know. Chime in. I'll lead us off. I'll be a leadoff hitter tonight. Take it right through the five and a half hole. Because, yes, is there other reasons for this? Absolutely there is. Right? Guys, there absolutely is other reasons. It's not all on Jalen by himself. Right? We all know that. So before we even go into the poll, Right, we're just talking about the biggest reason of all of them because I have a collapse like this, a lot of other things have to be going wrong around you, too. Fair, we know that going into this poll. It's not this, isn't we're gonna just sit here and crush Jalen. There's a lot of blame to go around here before I even get into this poll. There is a ton of blame to go around for this football team. Now, to the poll question, I agree, and you know why, you know why. Because you're paid like a franchise quarterback. You're supposed to bail us out. And I'm not blaming it all on him, but he's the biggest reason to me. You know, there's other reasons to go around. But there's guys open. He doesn't want to go through progressions. He, he doesn't have a good blitz pickup. He doesn't know what he wants to do with the football pre-blitz. Right? He's not good at recognizing it. He drops back too far. So there, there's, these, there's these problems that need to get fixed. These problems that we didn't see last year. <clears throat> and yes, did we become a pass-first offense for some reason? Yeah, I don't know why. Right? Like, I don't know why that was a change for this football team that was a top-five rushing attack in the NFL a season ago. All right? And now you're talking about this year. They ain't even in that conversation. Now, is he hurt? Right? More than just the finger that we know? Is there more going on? I don't know. Right? What I do know, this isn't the standard. This isn't good enough. Right when I when I'm talking about franchise quarterbacks, I'm talking about game changers. You see them all still playing, right? Everybody see them all still playing. Guess who's still out there? The franchise guys are still rocking and rolling out here. They're still around. Okay, there's always a few left out. Okay, but he hasn't played good enough this year. And yes, play calling's been bad. Nick Sirianni, we're gonna get in the, if we fire Nick Sirianni or not. 
or if we're just firing coordinators. We're going to get into it all tonight. But, yes, it starts with your head coach, but on the football field, it starts with your quarterback. And we got to hold them to a standard that we saw a season ago. This wasn't even close to a standard a season ago. And, yes, before people attack me, come after me, I'm stating the obvious. So listen to what I'm saying. The offensive play calling, Nick Sirianni, they could all go. I'm not I'm not getting rid of Jalen, you understand? I'm not getting rid of Jalen. So before you all come at me, I'm not getting rid of Jalen Hurts. I'm telling you, he didn't play good enough for these seven games. And the play calling's that bad? You're telling me with those show ponies, the play calling's that bad. Because the defense has been atrocious. You're downright awful. But we've been in games. We've been in games. We kept us in this game tonight. We didn't convert a third down. And if we did, it wasn't too late. So tell me I'm wrong. Tell me, tell me this is okay. That, that, that's good enough football for you guys, and then okay. Going a lot of people. But if you ain't gonna start with your quarterback, I don't know who else we're starting with besides Nick can go tomorrow. Nick could have went yesterday to me. I'm not getting rid of Jalen. You understand? But he's got to play better than he did this year if we want to go to places we want to go. Right? And then if we bring in new coaching, we're going to find out. Right, guys? We're talking about this year. And Nick can go. Like I said, Nick, Johnson, the, the side, Patricia, the whole staff can go tonight. All right? Jalen's not going anywhere. But he stunk down the stretch. Stunk. That's my that's my rant. And I don't even got a lot in the tank. I'm just annoyed. But it's so much blame. There's nothing so, left. We'll get in there. We'll get in the rest of the blame. Yeah. And, I, and I hear everybody commenting in. I just want everybody to take a step back. Take your love for the kid away. Because I love Jim. That's the dude. Right? Take your love away. Is that good enough football from him? Take away all the rest. Because that can go. Did he play good enough for you this season? If he did, okay. Okay. That's your opinion. What do you boys say? What does everybody out there say? Fifty million is a lot of money. It's a lot of that's a lot of zeros. All right. So we always we've said it all the time. Like you know, with that comes a lot of responsibility. Right? So you know, that's at the end of the day, the quarterback always always should shoulder the blame. Always always takes it. That's just the way it is. You know, that, that's the that's the nature of the position. So that's the reason why you guys get paid the most. All right. So, um, but yeah, that's just, that's just reality. I mean, you know, you saw a lot, you know, we said last week, Oh, he regressed. And then, you know, people, people didn't like that. Okay. So uh, I guess just tell me what you watched, you know, besides, besides the play calling. I know that's the, the obvious thing. All right. Cause it's, you know, we're like, Oh, what the hell is this? You know, there's bubble screens and, and, <laughs> and, and all kinds of, you know, just slop up there. And I, you know, I get it. You know what I mean? But, you know, maybe there's a, you know, maybe there's a, a little bit of a reason to that too. Cause sometimes, you know, where, where there's smoke, there's fire. You know what I mean? So the guy, you know, the guy doesn't step up in the pocket. The guy doesn't read defenses very well. We know how he is against the blitz. Uh, yikes. So, you know, guy, you, you know, you can't be running these, uh, you know, maybe they, they, maybe they can't, maybe you're not capable of running these elaborate schemes. And I, I know they did last year. So, it's, you know, that's where people are going to rebuttal. All right, but we've also seen in this league, you know, guys have lightning in a, in a bottle too, right? In in a year or uh, or 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 two seasons, right? And that's all we were saying was, hey, just hang on to that checkbook for a second, right? Let's you know, let's get a little bit of body of work here, you know what I mean? And that's and and, and we were roast and people you know wanted to kill us for it. So it, it is what it is. So yeah, he ain't going anywhere. So now you have to decide, you know. Uh, what do you do with all the other holes? You know, like, and I, and I asked you guys this, I asked you guys in the thread, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and we understand the Eagles have a standard. They've been a great organization for a long time. You know what I mean? But when you're paying a guy $50 million, all right, you know, it doesn't become a rebuild with all the holes you have, you know what I mean? And some of these guys walking out the door, you know, possibly, I'm just saying, Kelsey had tears in his eyes. You know, he's probably just upset. He, you know, he doesn't like to lose, but he's shaking hands. It didn't, doesn't bode well right there. That, yeah. That, that didn't look like a guy coming that back. Did, that didn't look good right there. All right. And we love Kelsey. All right. And that might be the end of the run for Cox and Graham. Well, Pete, did yeah. you agree with me? Did you agree with me before they signed them? 
where I was ranting and raving about it in a way, and nobody wanted to listen about like waiting to sign him. It wasn't a rush. I got crushed for it. Like, and, and it wasn't a shot at Jalen. It was like we don't got to sign him yet. He ain't gonna leave. The, he ain't gonna leave here. We're not letting him leave if he's good enough. Not that if he's good enough, but if he's a franchise quarterback, he's obviously he's obviously gonna be here. And and he hasn't. And again, he hasn't been good enough all day. And Jamie, what's up, brother? Appreciate the super chat. Uh, he said, "Sup, fellas? Nick got to go. You can't bring him back. He's lost the team. I, I can't disagree with that at all. He's absolutely lost his football team. There's no disagreements, and we're going to get in the Nick. And if he's got to go or not, Mr. Rudy Poo, Jalen Hurst showed a lack of effort, and it looks like he lost the locker room. Wow. I thought he was one of the guys who would never quit. That's interesting. It's an interesting feel. You know, I haven't taken it like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'd go but, that far, but I'm not. But I have taken. He hasn't played good enough. That's all I'm going because I ain't going to question those things with him yet because because that's never been an issue. So why would we start now, right? When yeah. we when you this is the agenda base we, or we praised him last year for this. Yeah, yeah, we can't yeah, right. like let's. This is what's credible and not credible in the world, and depending on what you kind of podcast and shows you like to listen to, right? And I like to say we just keep it real here. We ain't in it for no agenda. I ain't slandering the name of a kid who works his ass off and has gotten better, but had a bad year. Right now, next year's a bounce back. It's what you have in sports, man. So let's see how he bounces back, and let's see what's around him. But um, this isn't good enough, guys. And he's into our poll, and Greg's going to answer it. So sweeps agrees. I agree. Will you agree, sweeps? In a way, do you agree to the poll? Uh yeah, I, I would say I disagree. Just because, right. like you, I mean, like you alluded to in your uh, in your in your opening rant was. It, there's a lot more to this, right? There's a lot more to this. So, you know, for the for the for the paycheck and the prestige of the position and the leadership and everything that comes with it, you know, and you know when he was 26 and two, you know, nobody cared. You know what I mean? So that's you know like uh, you know with it when the good is the good, you ha- you also have to you have to accept the you know the failure if you want to accept the 26 and two or 28 and two, whatever it was. I don't know exactly, but if you want to. If you want to take your you want to take your tour and you want to take your bow, then you got to get crucified when it's time, right? And that's all we're trying to say. Like, you know, and the people that you know just don't allow that in this area. You know what I mean? Where, you know, a few years ago, you know, there was a few years ago, there was a lot of eyeballs on a guy on a, on on a, on everything a certain guy did years ago. Yeah. Right. A lot yep. of speculation on every snap. On every game, on every decision, and a guy oh. year be- and a guy years before that. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. You know, so I mean, that's the, but but guess what? It's not nothing new. Like people act like franchise quarterbacks being held to a standard, something new. I mean, that's been the, that's been a walk of life in the NFL since it started. I don't know why that's like a new trend to people. Like that's who that's the most posi- important position in sports. So when you're when you're looking at issues, you're going to start with it. Is he struggling? Is he playing good enough? And then when he's not, you're like, uh-oh. Now, so other factors that can be a reason why a guy's not playing good enough? Of course, we know the coaching hasn't been good enough, right? Okay? You, you haven't seen the effort, the fight, the scratch, the claw, that kind of crap that you were expecting to see. And if there was a week to do it, here you are. He's chiming in. Greg, before you go, he said mm-hmm. he ch- he checked out on – talk about Jalen Hurts. He checked out on the sidelines. His body language was awful throughout the game. And at the end of the game, he runs away to the locker room while his teammates are out there with the other team after the game. So we did confirm one thing, me and, me and Uncle Sweeps, is the fact that he did, Sweeps, great rewind, finds out that he did go shake Baker's yeah. hand. So sure. we'll give him that. I don't need him to have a party out there, right? Yeah, yeah we don't. I don't need you, yeah, yeah, I don't need you exchanging yeah, jerseys I, yeah, and exactly. shit. You I actually like, like that. Like, shake that, a hand, get out of that, Dodge. That's all we said for the previous yep. week when hell was going loose. You got you to gotta, you gotta man up. And you got to go shake the guy's hand. But yeah, you don't have to have a prayer circle. You don't have to change jerseys. You don't have to do any of that. Absolutely not. Right. And if you want actually, to, do you, boo boo. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. I, think, I don't care what they do, but I'm saying, you know, like you should, it should bother you. Right. So we do like the fact that, you know, that he, that he cares. You know what I mean? But doesn't, you know, it doesn't, you know, that's not, you know, that's not, that's not good enough. And that's, a, you know, just because guys care, you know, it's the old, it's the old saying, you know, wish in one hand, shit in the other, see which one fills up faster. You know what I mean? So you can, you can be as positive as you want. You can be as supportive as you want. Like at the end of the day, you still got to go play. 
And, you know, and, and we know the coaching has been terrible. I just feel that's the easiest scapegoat. At some point, you got paid a lot of money. You, you got to make plays, man. You have to make plays. Yeah. It can't just, you know, 0 for 11 on third down and fourth down. 0 for 11. In a playoff, they weren't even close. In a playoff game. In yeah. a playoff game against yeah, that's the Bucs. That's not the 85 Bears. Come on, man. That's you know, cute. like, you know, give them credit. But everybody knew that was the worst play. You know, I'm beside, <laughs> I, I take that back. Besides the Eagles, that was the worst playoff team. It was the Bucks. Everybody was like, oh, I wish we were playing the Bucks." You know, <laughs> and somehow Vegas missed the boat. I mean, we know, you know, listen, they've been wrong before, but we couldn't believe it. I had no idea how they, they, anybody could have thought the Eagles were favored, right? You know, it just should have been three the other way. It didn't have to be, you know, egregious. I'm not saying it should have been four or five, six. They obviously got doored, right? But I, I don't know. I, I guess Vegas thought they were playing possum too. I have no idea. But it's people that are in this area watching every week. You know, we knew, all right? And the only thing I try to tell my buddies and the things I told you guys, too, we understand how hard it is to win, win in this league. But the difference between the collapse and maybe flipping a switch and it's playoff time and everybody's zero, everybody's 0-0 is when they were even 10-1, and 1, it was a soft 10-1, and 1, right? And people kill me for that because wins are tough to get in this league. But it really it was. And, we, and we, we, we said it. And if you didn't admit that, then you – then you were really a homer, right? We gave them credit because they were finding ways to win close games, and that's what it takes in this league, right? But it wasn't a 10 and one juggernaut like it was last year. It was a soft 10 and one, right? And then and then the bottom fell out. All right. Against, yeah, and I, against, and I against think against inferior and, teams. Against yeah, inferior teams. Yeah, and, and like we we knew it. We knew it was like they almost blew their load on the year, too. Right. It's like one of their things. But uh all right, Greg, to the poll, what do you do you agree or disagree? Jalen Hurts is the biggest reason for the Eagles' end of season collapse. Yeah, and I'm even going to take it a step further. I'm going to disagree. And this is not absolving of Jalen Hurts' play. Because down the last seven weeks, he's been downright atrocious. Right. But if you look at this entire year, as kind of sweeps alluded to, this team was not prepared week in and week out. This team came into games, was traditionally down even when we were 10 and one how many times were we down at halftime and then we came back right that how many times were we in this type of game that we were in tonight right the game looks like it should be nowhere close but yet here we are we're in a one score game we're in a two score game and if we could just have a pulse on offense we'd be in this game right and, and we lived that right for 11 weeks we were 10 and one live it on that line and we we blew every load that we had going 10 and one and I just – I look at the way that this team was prepared or ill-prepared going forward, going throughout the entire year, but then especially when you get down to nut-cutting time. I mean, what, what, what did they say? The only team or one of few teams to start off 10-1 and one and not get the 12 wins? Yeah. And you face the Giants twice and the Cardinals once at home? Mm -hmm. Like, that's atrocious. Yeah, yep, absolutely. That's atrocious. But the way they came out – those last seven games, let's throw away, let's throw away San Fran, throw away Dallas, right? Because that's right after the juggernaut and a, and a division game. Not going to kill them. I mean, we could go back and kill them on it now, right? But in the moment, we're not going to kill them there. But from Seattle on, and even tonight, you came out and you looked like dog shit. You had no offensive rhythm. You had nothing going on. And that is directly at your head coach because to him, this is his offense. Yeah, that's that's the biggest concern. That's why you wonder, will Nick Sirianni be here next year? So, I mean, that's the next question that we're going to roll out here. What's the status of Nick Sirianni? Yeah, and I, I know. We, what, percent, you, what percent do you guys think he's back? 100% uh, percent, percent yeah. chance he's back, right? And then we can get in the coordinators. Or do you have a feel that, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh, Nick? Think, uh, sorry to jump the gun. I think this is a Dallas situation. I think Queen House, I, I'm going 15% he's back. If you would have asked me this Wednesday, Tommy, right? We yeah. had this discussion on Wednesday. I was vehemently against firing Nick Sirianni. But again, when you come out and you don't look like that this potentially is your last game, that there is nothing different, that there was no uh, no adjustments at all, but when why? you go through that, that's you got a clean house. But why? Yeah, it's like the why, offense. What? This is my question because we've had talks about this. Yeah, we've had talks about well, why was the side moved 
and not Brian Johnson, right? right. And we Absolutely. came we came to our own conclusion that the tape says guys are open offensively, and we're not getting the were. football. Yeah, they and we're are. Not getting, and we're not getting the football. <laughs> and they so are. when you know that, when you know that side of it, how are we going to put that? How are we going to put that all on Nick when it talks to rhythm? Like I need my quarterback to get you. in the rhythm. I hear you, but I, 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 I also, like he's got to play for me. I, I have designed the greatest call stable, in the world, like like Dallas, right? Though, right? We have an owner that is now embarrassed. That's and, right. Well, and he's uh, yeah, embarrassed. yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. He is. Yeah, listen, I, you know? it's it's. I mean, it's a business. If you want to keep the standard up, like you know, we've yeah. talked about for years. We talked about for years. It's not a good look if you keep changing coaches, right? But. But it's okay. That's you know, three years. That's okay. That's what that's what guys get three year deals. All right. So sometimes doesn't matter if you went to a Super Bowl, you know, your time is up. Sometimes your ticket is up. All right. And it might not be all your fault. Uh, it doesn't matter. Right. The the last eight last eight weeks are an abomination. An abomination. They were the worst team in the NFL in the last eight weeks yeah. after being ten and one. Yeah. Go back and think about that. I'm not. I'm, I'm talking about the Giants. Think about the worst teams in the league. They lost mm-hmm. to those teams if you consider those teams the worst teams in the league. Yeah, so they became they, the worst. They team. became the worst team in the league. Yeah. Like that is that solely, you know, it, everybody has a hand in it, but that's it, as the head coach, that's that's you, buddy. You have to fall on the sword, right? You're the guy or somebody up top, and you allowed it to make a coordinator change and then keep a guy in the building, right? And you, you made a swap. For a perennial, for a loser uh, like Patricia, like who can't just stay right there? Like once again, the, the, that guy, you know, then the side became the scapegoat. Like it's just, uh, you know, it's horrible, absolutely, absolutely horrible. You know, and tonight, I think tonight was just, you know, was the was the season in a nutshell. Everything to me was a magic show this year. Tonight, this year was a David Copperfield special. It was a magic show. It was the 10 and one was a magic show. The offense, whenever it worked was a magic show. All right. The defense at times, like, like Tommy alluded to earlier, I'm not saying he was wrong, but it looked like, and they were, it was 16 to nine. Looked like they were keeping a minute, but, but it, like I said, it was a, it was a mirage because the Bucks dropped five balls. They dropped two touchdowns. And I know that's part of the game. I'm just saying the Bucks were doing everything they could to keep them in it. All right. That was the worst display of tackling I've ever seen since Pee Wee football, since Pee Wee football. So that has nothing to do with coaching and scheme. That's embarrassing. That's fundamentals. That's at your feet, Nick, and whatever else. I understand the league has changed, and maybe they don't do tackling drills anymore, but it's a joke. That was embarrassing to watch tonight. They set defense tackling back 200 years. Yeah, I mean, and, that's why, awesome. and that's why – and that's why when you when you asked me this – when that question is brought up about Nick Sirianni, do wow. I bring him back or not, and what percentage do I think he's back? 20, 25. You know, Maybe. You know, you're like 25. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I might be at like 10 yeah. because, like, after the like again, after you watch your football team, it takes on your personality. Come out there, your corners don't want to tackle anybody. They don't give a shit, right? The only one who wanted to tackle somebody was Avante Maddox. When you go, when you really watched it, he was the only corner at all tackling or or back end guy. So that's alarming as shit, right? Your linebackers are are, are bad, but they miss a million tackles. So your front gets no pressure. Your offense has no rhythm, right? You, you don't run the football enough. So it's like, oh, well, they they weren't getting great. They weren't getting great yards on the ground. Well, that's the thing you stick with. Well, you t- give it a chance. That's the thing you try to get a break. You try to break one. You do, you hope DeAndre breaks one, and then your offense can get a little spark and get a little rhythm. Because when you're struggling offensively, you're looking for that spark. And when you're not getting it by doing the same damn thing over and over and over again. Right, I can't watch anymore. Like I can't watch one read and go. And I'll say the coaching staff, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't coached that up too. Right? Or how about two guys within five yards of each other? Yeah, that too, Greg. But I can't have a, I can't have a guy that was in the MVP conversation degress in two years now. Right? I can't have him get worse. Yeah. And our football team get worse, and then not look at Nick and say, "Uh oh." And and well, who's that on? Right. So that's the same thing with Duck. Same thing with Duck. Yeah. So to me, that's why I'm at 10%. I don't bring them back at all. Like there's enough names out there now that wet that that my palate, my palate is there's, is, is there's, moist. Yeah, my palate's real moist with a lot of fucking vets. Sorry for my language again, 
right? But that's the first time tonight, 24 minutes in, after an embarrassing loss, that there's a lot of veteran names out there that I would love. And do not let a guy that's in this in this state become available too. Well, Pittsburgh, that's, don't that's get where, stupid. That's where that's where I was going. Like it's one stage. thing. It's one thing if everybody, you know, we know it's a retread league, you know, with the, with the coaches. You know what I mean? But it was one thing if everybody was, you know, still employed besides besides Brandon Staley, who should never coach football again. You know what <laughs> I mean? But Vrabel's out there. All right. I love you, Mikey. You, you gotta, you know, and that's the time. That's why you're like, even if even if the last eight weeks didn't go the way they did, it's like, hey, there's Mike out there because as, as intriguing as Bill would be, Bill's only got a couple years left. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, I'm not looking for right? Bill. And yeah. and, yeah. and, and Bill and Bill's the air quote genius. I get all that. This team, especially the last week, last last eight weeks, lacked an identity and lack toughness. And that's what Vrabel brings when he walks in the door. Toughness. And if you don't get him, he's going to Dallas because Jerry ain't stupid. Because, you know, he might be uh, all roads point back to New England. There ain't nothing in New England, Mike, all right, besides you being there. So there's plumbing your jobs. Hang on. Hang on, big fella. <laughs> Hang yeah, on. And, I, and I'll double dip on that. already. Huh? Well, no, he meant probably meant. He probably he he meant DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a coordinator, yeah. What I'll say about Vrabel is that, like, Honestly, I would have fired Nick a week ago for, for Mike. As soon as Mike came available, I'd say, hey, Nick, we don't need you for the playoff game. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll see you later because <laughs> that's how much I respect them. When you watch guys get more out of less, you know how they build a culture, that's right? Okay. And, and again, it doesn't always have to be a former player. but like, And it doesn't always have to be a win. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, but he's a winner watch- too. Oh, no, but I'm, I meant I meant today. Like it don't always have to be a win. If you watch the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're so fucking tough. They're yeah. so tough. They don't belong anywhere near that game today, and they still yeah. lost by fourteen. So everybody's like, "Oh, who's this idiot ranting about?" They're tough. The Pittsburgh yeah. Steelers are tough without their leader on defense and with that with a, a Lego Mason Rudolph, you know, quarterbacking, <laughs> quarterback. And Tennessee, right? Tennessee will punch you in the mouth last week. Two I mean, weeks Rabel, ago, Tenn- yeah, Rabel won with, with Tannehill. Rabel won with Tannehill. Yeah, Tennessee <laughs> stinks, and they will smack you every week. Yeah. Tennessee's in football games every week. Every week, Pittsburgh in games, winning games. Mm-hmm. Like when Tennessee had talent, they actually win one games, and they never had a quarterback. Could you imagine with a franchise guy? Could you yeah, imagine they, getting Rabel in here? I guarantee the linebackers tackle. They went to a deep run with Tannehill. Like I can't, I can't watch Darius Slay anymore. James Bradbury. Any any of these guys back there? I, mean, I need Bradbury, some toughness. Yeah, James Bradbury shouldn't even be on a, a football field. No, and no. The, I mean, the it, first clue, like, like you said, I know guys don't grow on trees. Sorry, I'll just be real quick, all right? But the first clue, and I always this is why I notice everything. What right? up, Ray? That's, that's what why up, Ray? I know. You know, I know. You know, I just I, I see I see everything, and then sometimes you got to look deeper, right? When you're dealing with a guy, right? Bradbury should have been released. After the Super Bowl, and I'm going to tell you for what reason. I'm not even talking about his play on the field. I'm talking about when he said, when he admitted that he held. Uh, yeah, I, I held. No, you take that to the grave, and you motherfucker. Excuse me. The refs up and down. You know, hey, I, I, I held. It's my fault. No, I'm ah, sorry. Bye. There's your ticket right there. Yep. That was your ticket last year, right? He would have never been back. Can't have that in my locker room. Well, let me tell you something, so man. <laughs> let me tell you something. When you ask a great question, the big question is how and Lori. Are they ready to give up power and control? Because if Mike Vrabel, he'll, he'll probably won't control. Now, this is what I'll say to that. that guy comes in with clout. Yep. I'm but <laughs> but this is why this is why they, if they're if they're guys that are able to take a step back and reflect, they'll understand that they went and won a Super Bowl when a guy had control. Right. So if you make the right hire and you let him bring in his guys around him, not player wise, right? Like necessarily, but start with coaching staff wise, right? When you allow a guy that control. All right, now he, now he can build what he wants to build around him. That always needs to be in control. So I don't know why any coaching staff would be brought in without it being totally on what the head coach wants around him, right? Who's going to be my offensive coordinator? Who's going to be my defensive coordinator, right? Those things matter. Then we can get into players in a little bit, right? That like Howie Roseman, okay, with all due respect, Howie, I need a linebacker. I need a linebacker in here mm. because I need to draft some. And if you haven't noticed how the NFL is attacking defenses, it's over the middle of the field. So the fact that we can't throw over it to begin with offensively, all right, and two, defensively, we can't stop it. Well, here you are as the worst team in football over the last seven weeks. 
That, that's how you get there, guys. And you might. You want to know how we got there? That's yeah, how we you, got there. And you step back, and you and you, you know, those two guys. You know, I know they're power hungry, but those two, you know, it might be time, Howie. You, you look in the mirror, and it's time for you to step back too. You want to keep yeah. your job? It's time for you to step back too, right? Because you know, if you want to, you know, you just watch, watch the watch. You know, you watch tonight's atrocious tackling in the secondary, right? Oh. And then you you're going to turn on your TV next week, and you're going to vomit. Vomit when you watch how delicious Kyle Hamilton is. Delicious. You haven't had a guy since B. Dawkins on the back end, and you had your chance, and you decided to go with a, a guy that looked like a specimen. That was cute. He moves well for a 350-pounder. He's a plank. I got news for you, and I don't care. Maybe he'll be great, right? But you don't make that pick unless it's a future Warren Sapp, which they did this year with, uh, with Jalen Carter, right? You didn't have to make that pick that year. And, there's, you know, we're not going back to revisionist history, right? But there might be times when you, you step back and say, hey, let's, maybe it's time for me to get out of the draft room. Let me, let, me, let, me, yeah. let, me turn, let me turn this over to football guys. Well, let me say this. There's over 178 people just watching on YouTube alone. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. Stay with us all off season, right? We got you covered here at A2D Radio. And for everybody else of the 300-plus people watching us all over live right now, Hit the subscribe and like wherever you're following us too. Comment in. Stay with us, baby. Stay with us for this ride because we're going to dissect it. Uh, so listen, we all think he's gone then, right? And and I, I don't and think I, there's any way you can bring him back. Now, if there's no names out there, I may not. Agreed. Agreed. But again, well, Greg, well, I agree with that. When you collapse like that, it's hard for me to bring anybody back. 100%. But, but the I, light if I'm not a quarterback a million dollars, I might move on from him too. Now, sure. I want him because it's hard to find in this league, right? Yep. They're hard to find. But it would so, be nice just to franchise them, wouldn't it? Oh, uh, yep. Would be nice just to franchise them. Martian says 183 people, 30 <laughs> likes. The chat wants Sirianni back. Yeah. yeah. But you, you look at this game, you look at this game, and, and, and you just mentioned it how. Like, yeah, here's another one. Mike Collins, sorry. Took Nolan Smith yeah. over Branch. Now the jury's know. out on Smith still, right? So you don't want to crown it. But right now, Branch is a baller. We knew right, this. Yes, and I, would, I yeah, told you. And I, would, I told you this from my couch. I tell you how Bama guys from my couch when Saban was there. I'll tell you. I just wanna, I'm yeah, usually yeah. right about Bama guys. I'm not telling you anybody else, but Bama guys I usually have always hit. I'm not saying it's hard, but there's been misses, right? Yeah. Those yeah. guys are sort of easy to see. Branch is a ball hawk. He's an open field tackler. Like they're the thing. Oh, he's too small. And Shut that's, up. And that's all. I, that's all as I was saying. I want. I want to rewind real quick because. You know, uh, Davis could Ooh. be Davis. Davis could be good. Davis could be good when it's all said and done. I don't know. Right. right? But like my that. my point is, you always had back end trouble, right? You didn't need. They were considered. You know, there was a time when the Eagles had the best offensive front and the best defensive front. All right, and, and we even thought that coming into this year. You know what I mean? Um, oh my God! I know, so, hit me. So that, was, that was the other reason why you shouldn't. You didn't have to pick. And didn't have to take a D tackle when you got. You know, when you had guys. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I like the pick, but looking back on it, you know, I'm annoyed, right? I'm annoyed, but I will say this, right? I will, I will say, well, you're hoping for a run stopper. I don't know if he even got that, but I did, well, you know, jury's out when the other guy, the jury isn't out. Okay. We know the jury. I will say this Belichick out in new England. Saban no longer at Bama. Wouldn't it be amazing if you open up the checkbooks that big? <laughs> and you got one as your D coordinator and one as your head coach. And you really took – like you really took it to another level. Like that's how you get cute. You want to get cute? That's like Jerry's thinking. Like how much yeah. oil money, how much oil money back, do I have? Back in the same <laughs> same boat two, three years down the road, right? Like how funny would that be? For, but, guys, I'll take those two for three years. Yeah. One is my coordinator, one is my head coach. Nick didn't yeah, do it. The, Nick didn't do it in the pros, though. No, but Nick doesn't have to. He needs to be a, he needs to be a coordinator. But he's getting paid to be a head coach. He's assistant head coach. There is no cap on the coaches. That is for sure. Come on, back up uh, the brick real quick. Yeah, go ahead. When you look at this game, right? When we had success offensively, it was very little. But when we had success offensively, we were run the first two plays, right? Yeah. Running the football, mm -hmm. and then when we were passing over the middle of the field, right? Most of Devontae's most of Devontae's catches were over the middle of the field. When we start going boundary. And we start trying to throw to a long ways in the field, we get in trouble, right? It all started on that bubble screen to Quez after we had just did two or three passes across the middle. We went bubble screen to Quez, and then our offense went to shit that drive. And from there on, you pretty much could have turned the TV off because it was a wrap. 
Yeah. We don't attack the middle of the field. I know we were talking slants earlier. I don't even not even just slant, but we don't attack the middle of the field with anything. No. Anything. No. And, and when we do, like, yeah, you gotta works. take shots. I mean, you gotta take shots. I mean, yeah, like you said, and we get exposed as, there. As, as, right? as we get exposed as, there and we don't yeah. take shots there, and we yeah, don't do anything there. As bad as we said he's been, and he and he has been. That was a gorgeous 55 yarder to to 100%. Smith. That was Smith. a guy. You got to stretch the field. You got to take a shot. You can get PI. You can get a lot of things, right? But it goes. It's it's this. It's <laughs> these last eight weeks in a nutshell was the possession before the half, right? You, you got third down. What are you doing? They're, they're throwing a screen on third down. Just throw it down. You can get a PI. Throw it down the field. What yeah. Do now you, do? you don't want to get the PI you talked about. You doing? Right? Now you don't want to get that PI. Right? Like, just I, you can't again. You can't lose a locker room like this. Like it's happened. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe listen. Maybe we're BG saying he's back, and somebody said, you know, would you bring back Fletcher? Yeah, I bring back Fletcher for another year. You've seen it. Now I also think Milton Williams can play. He just needs snaps, right? I do like Milton Williams a lot. You got Jalen Carter, but like I'll bring Fletcher back because you need to put your resources now in your back end. Yeah, because I'm already worried about your pass rush. But we'll yep. see what we'll see what another year brings for some of these younger cats. Well, different different D coordinator potentially helps that out, right? Yeah, for sure. It's a different year. It's a new year, guys. You still know some guys can get to the quarterback. Yeah. Um. But listen, I mean, I mean, it was nice in that second half to see finally the defense wake up and get some pressure. I, I know it's I know we're obviously past that, but it was nice to finally see the defense look like a shell of what it looked like early in the season. To where they were able to make adjustments in the second half, they made adjustments at halftime, and and they would they produce three, three punts after not punting the whole first half. Then they were able to produce three. We just couldn't do anything offensively to stay in the game. So a great super chat from Chris. Sorry, Chris, I missed it at first. He says he says three straight playoff appearances, sure, but in those two appearances, we had our doors blown off. Nick, it's very expendable. <laughs> Going to agree with you more, brother. By Thanks the for the super too. chat. By the Bucks twice. <laughs> by the same defense. Same defense, by the way. So that's a good talk. You know what that's I mean? That's fun. Point, that's Chris. fun that you didn't get better from that. Right? Not only coordinator-wise and play calling and design, but the quarterback too. Right? That's not okay. That's not okay. Dale with a super chat. Thanks, Dale. He said, the only reason I would understand why we keep Nick is he brought us to a Super Bowl. But he showed us his true colors this year. Booed him. So, I mean, the people are talking. And I, and I think Jeffrey has always had a good feel of the people. And when he's losing the people and when he needs a spark, Jeffrey's smart. He'll go after a spark name. He won't go after, right, to me, this isn't the time to go after the unknown guy. Right? No, no, this is the time go. when yep. you got names out there like you do. I'm full court pressing a guy like Vrabel or anybody else that, you know, will come up. Right? <clears throat> Maybe Bill. But I'll start with Mike, and then if Tom was available, we'll go there too. Yeah, no, I mean I hear you. They might have, um, and like I said, every every shelf life has you know has its has its expiration date. You know, it doesn't matter if it's two years, three years, eight years, ten years, you know, twelve years. You know, like you know, as good as Andy was, it, you know, at that that last year, that was enough. That was you know, you knew you knew it was you know, you knew that was that was time for Andy to go. It was time for a new voice. You know, Doug won you a Super Bowl, all right? And then, and then they had, and the next year wasn't great or whatever it was. And you know, whether they wanted the control or you know they were forcing Jalen on him, I don't know. Like he said, he you know was involved in that pick. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I, I don't know if that was it. Whatever the reasoning was, you know, they wanted a a, a yes guy. I don't I don't know what they wanted. Yeah. You know what I mean? So and now he had three years um, under 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 Nick, and I, I don't know if any of those seasons with the prior guys has been as disappointing and as embarrassing as this year. You know what I mean? Even Andy's last year at four and 12, like, eh, you know, I don't know, you know, because for, you know, this year with all the hype and especially being 10 and one, <laughs> 10 and yeah. one, your quarterback in the MVP conversation again. Right. Yeah. And, you know, you keep going back to that, you know, presence that you set, firing a guy after three years, right? Three playoffs years. But you just, you watch what you watch with your eyes and, and you just can't fathom how you continue, right? E even going into next year, like, all right, fine. You bring him in next year. Wh what are you going to do? Have a short lease then? Then you might as well go. Then you're throwing away next year. Yeah. 
Like we yeah. we already threw away this year. Why throw away next year also if you're going to bring him back? Yeah, you don't need a lane. You're only going to bring him back and okay. extend him, right? I mean, that's the yeah. thought. You bring him back because you want to extend him. Because if you're going in with a short leash, then you're setting yourself back now two years. Yeah, let's go. Let's get let's get over a hundred likes here over on YouTube and Facebook. We're up over fifty now, and let's get their subscribers up. Let's go up fifty to hundred subscribers tonight. I know there's new cats in here. They may not want to jump in, but jump in. The water's warm over here. And listen, we love to talk with you. And when you um, like I said, there's no reason. Well, Nick just came out. He's at the podium now. So, so Bill was no saying reason. guys weren't coming out. Um, they were saying it on Sports Center that guys weren't coming out and they have to. So I'm interested to see what he has to say. Not that I really am, because it's going to be more coach speak. Yeah, like I said, that's exactly right. I like I don't put much coaching, much stock, excuse me, in like like a coaching you know, revolving door. You know what I mean? I looked at it like if I was in charge, listen, if, you, if you're not good enough and you're not getting it done and, and you're losing the team and whether that's rumors or not, we're all watching with our eyes the last eight weeks. You know what I mean? It was just, it's, 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 it's time to move on. You know what I mean? So, you know, when you get an organization that has a standard, right, it's usually because they won multiple Super Bowls. You know, they never had a losing season, stuff like that. You know what I mean? So when you get Pittsburgh that might have had three coaches in the last 50 years, there's a reason for that. You know, Chuck Knoll, tough. Cower, tough. Tomlin, tough. You know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, you know, obviously Bill was there for 20 years. Had Tom for about had Tom for about 16. <laughs> you know, so, but toughness. You know, New England, you think of New England, you think of defense, and you know, you think of Brady, but you think about, you know, getting getting more out of Less, you know, when yeah. you think of New England, toughness and just just fit, finding a way, you know. So, um, so there, I don't look at it like, uh, well, you know, you, you shouldn't have to, you know, restart all. Yeah, you restart anytime you need to. Right? I got news for you. Because right? you can go win you're right away. Owner. You're the owner. You're, yeah, yeah you, you don't have to rebuild. Oh, it's fair. No, no there be- isn't like there isn't like a reason if you go out and hire the right guy and you you essentially have your quarterback, you have your skill position players intact for the most part. That you can't be in a position to win next year in this league. Oh, look you no I mean? further. Oh, uh, Thomas Arnone. Look no further than Houston. <laughs> D'Amico Ryan's stud found their quarterback. Stud. Yeah. Playoff win. All right now you got to go to Baltimore, but they'll, they'll show up. All right, they won't get door. Well, we showed how it works for Jalen. They, they won't get door. We uh, showed it this year, like we showed last year and this year. When you're a run first team and you pound it well and you run it well, then he's going to have a ton of success. Right, and, he, and he's going to have a big year. This year, when you tried to be pass first, it didn't work as well. So if you go back to having a stout defense, a defense that gets off the field, the ability to run the ball down people's throats a little bit, to set up play action in the RPO game, you know, that's how you can be successful. But, you know, this year they didn't, you know, they didn't do that. You know, they didn't do that enough at all. They were always feel like they were playing from behind because they couldn't get in any rhythm themselves offensively. And when your head coach is an offensive guy, that's a big that's a big uh oh. Yeah, it's, like, it's you know, dandy. it's different. If he's a defensive guy, you're like, all right, let's get the right offensive coordinator in. Right, yeah. But, but you lost six out of seven down the stretch. Your offense had no sense of life or urgency. Mm-mm. So what are we talking about, bro? Like you ain't back. Are you kidding me? You shouldn't even came to the podium. And with all due respect, because I they don't want to cr- no, nobody should have a flight home. They should all book their own flights home. Yeah, and I'm Every not a single fan. one of them. Yeah, and I'm not like a fan of like poo poo playoff games, but it's the way you got there. It's the way you played 100%, 100%. matters. One hundred percent. Like context matters. It's not just like oh your resume. Context inside your resume now matters. And and I love all I love all our vets, right? BG Fletch, Kelsey Lane, right? I love all those guys, but they didn't show. You know what I mean? Everyone everyone all week was talking. Oh oh. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're the underdog. We love being the underdog. You know, new season. We know what we got in this locker room. Do you? I mean, that's that, that age well. Yeah, I mean, like I said, just encumbered the last thing. And, and I'm not putting that. I'm sorry. I'm no, not putting I'm just, that all on those guys. But when you bank on those guys, right? When you built this team around those guys, and we've seen those guys carry this team in the past, that's just where your mind goes. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Absolutely. And I, you know, like, and that's why, and that's why Nick and everybody has to go too. You know what I mean? Like, you know, cause you can't get rid of all the players. So that's why coaches are expendable. You know, this is the second worst loss 
in Eagles franchise history, you know, playoff loss. You know what I mean? Like it's um, to go along with the other seven weeks that went, that preceded this. So the seven weeks that preceded tonight's absolute debacle um, to led to the, you know, the second largest playoff loss in, in Eagles history. That goes at the, you know, that's strictly at the top. You know, like, like Greg alluded to earlier, it looked like they were going to change their identity and go back to what got, you know, to what they were, right. Which was running the football. You ran, you know, the first two plays, we're not saying you got to run it, you know, 20 times in a row, but you, you ran the ball twice in a row. You looked like you were good. And then, then you got cute again. All right. And then it was like, pawn them out. It's like, I don't know. Yeah. It's a joke. It's a joke. So, I mean, I, I have no, I have no more time for it. Right. And I have no more time for the quarterback not being good enough either. You know, he's on a, that's a conversation for another day, you know, cause he's, he's owed a lot of money. So. We gotta hope he figures yeah, it. His he's crap not going out. anywhere, right? Yeah, you we know, gotta hope he figures it out. You know what I mean, <laughs> we got, and, we gotta, we gotta play through it, as they say. Yeah, Devontae Smith, uh, most yards in the only positive of today's game, eight for one forty-eight, franchise playoff record. So yeah, no, he was, he was awesome. He, he showed up. Was AJ Brown not there? Anybody know? I don't know. I don't know. Would I say eight for one forty-eight? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because Jalen had 250, so it was less than almost a little more than 100 to everybody. Yeah, he said he catches everything. So, I mean, that that guy's back. AJ, we'll talk about him, but he's essentially back. We'll see how that goes. I mean, I know there's reports by some losers out there that claim he played his last game here. I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, I really don't. Like, I think that's just like you're looking for clicks as a San Francisco reporter. I don't think. Yeah, any, yeah. I was just gonna say, it depends where no it comes. Ties. Depends where it comes from. Like, I would ask you as a guy in this area, you know, if that's if there's any legitimacy to that if he wasn't there. That's why I was curious. I'm not saying you guys have the answer, right? I didn't see any pictures of him, right? Where was he? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I don't like, know. I don't know. No if reason. Like, there's no reason not to get on the plane. Yeah, like, I don't know. You know, you know if, and the other thing is, I don't know why you're ruled out 48 hours plus. In yeah, day. you that said was, that, that earlier. Was very strange. That I said that to you guys. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I'm a game I mean, timer. Yeah, I'll, you, like the kind of guy I am, you're gonna find out game time. Now that's telling to me when it comes to the coaching staff. Because the other thing I question too is why are we th- why are we saying on Thursday that Jalen hasn't thrown a ball all week? And why are we reporting that? Same thing, like we with AJ. Why are we telling this? Like you want to say it on Saturday or Sunday when you know obviously things well, ramp up. Cool, but yeah. why are we telling people on Thursday? Uh, yeah. And then, yeah, that and like I said, and that's once again at all points Agreed, at all at all points back to. You know, AJ maybe knowing the locker room and knowing what's going on in there and saying, you know what, which I don't agree with 100. I'm just speculating that, hey, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not risking it. I'm not, I'm not pushing the envelope here for this team and this coaching staff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, I, I got an air quote future. You know what? I, you know, that's, that's just me being a detective. You know what I mean? I don't know. You know what I mean? Could but be. I know he was, you know, in Atlantic City fights. They, I think somebody showed a picture of him. So, um, it's not like he's, you know, been, been in his house the whole time. So there's no reason not to get on a plane and come with your teammates. That's oh, you know. I agree. Uh, to the poll question, right? Jalen Hurts is the biggest reason for the Eagles end of season collapse. Do you agree or disagree on YouTube? 215 votes right now, 68% disagree, 34% agree. So, okay. I mean, fair. Probably, yeah, probably right. I thought fair. it. What's not fair is the amount of likes. To the amount of watching. <laughs> but again, let's get over 100 likes. Subscribe to the channel. Stay with us. I don't keep telling you people the same thing. That's like talking about Eagles football. We just keep saying the same things, you know? Expect the uh, different results. <laughs> Mike would love a Mike Tomlin in here. I don't know. You know, we can, we'll get into that stuff. I mean, I guess we're, the, the decisions on Jeffrey Lurie. It's going to be very interesting 48 to 72 hours when it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles. Very, yeah. very interesting. You know, I don't know if it goes longer than that, right? In terms of if they're keeping her, you know, I don't know how long they, they give that, but I would assume 48 to 72 yeah, hours. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, you know, not comparing it, but like you like at the end of the year for teams that aren't in the playoffs, you know, that, that's called Black Monday. You know what I mean? Black yeah. Monday is when you get a lot of pink slips and, and all that stuff, you know, so doesn't obviously doesn't have to, you know, have to be tomorrow, but I expect – you know, you would think that Wednesday there's, you know, there's a meeting going on Wednesday. You know what I mean? Because if you yeah. wait too long, because if you are going to make a move and you wait too long, 
you know, you, you're going to be left holding the bag, you know? Yeah. Then you don't have anybody. Elgin. Yeah. Uh, comments in. He says, "I'm not a high. I'm not as high on Jalen anymore, but definitely not the reason for his struggles." Okay, brother. Fair enough. You know. Uh, no, we agree with you, but you know he's the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles. They scored nine points tonight. Yeah. In a, in a, in a, again, win or go home game. Like yeah, we could against against the against not the '85 Bears. Can, Bill, can does he sound? Bill, does he sure. sound like a guy who's not going to be here in his presser? I'm interested. That's what he feels, but uh, real truth says hurts overrated. Yeah, I don't know if we're there yet, but we could be after this after next year. Not hard to argue this year. I mean, he did no. have a good year, so no, no one's Mike, arguing with that. I'm not willing no, to throw in throw them all the way under the bus, though. Agree, Greg. We could we could be there pretty quick. <laughs> no, nah, but 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 a good but a good question. Yeah, I mean, because for the money, sure. <laughs> and I know the position gets paid. I get it. You know what I mean? So, but for the money, yeah, maybe. Mike Royal, <laughs> does Jalen have a lingering knee issue? He doesn't seem to have the pop or the burst. Is probably the, the proper term, I guess. But yes, I don't know. I guess yeah. some of that stuff will come out after after the season. Now, I'm you know? I'm interested to see. I, I agree, Mike. I'm interested to see. I know Troy kind of brought it up in the broadcast. I'm interested to see kind of you know after hockey playoffs, right? You hear how bad some of these guys on the ice really are playing through, right? I, I'm interested to see what else might be lingering, uh, you know, with Jalen. It, it yeah. just it did it didn't look right, and for a lot of the year. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. And it could be lower half, absolutely. Because it certainly wasn't the finger. I mean, I understand, you know, it probably wasn't fun to have that happen last week, but, you know, you saw in the deep ball, he, he was fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he just, you know, he was fine. Yeah, he didn't have the burst. And maybe that was some of the reason we weren't RPO and like we expected. Yeah, right? it could be. Or we were more in like just a missionary position, per se. And if that's the case, like, again, it goes back to, you know, I guess the offensive mindset and stuff like that. If that's the case, though, why aren't we under center? You know what I mean? Like, if we're not going to do an RPO, why aren't we under center? Well, I mean, that, the, Craig, common sense isn't working here. Yeah. Right? That, that, no, you no, start having you common are, sense. No, 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 I mean, when yeah, you're, yeah, works, you're, we go away from it. Yeah, you're yeah. talking normal <laughs> stuff. Like, we've said that all the time. Like, <laughs> the guy should be able to take a snap. You take a snap in peewee football. So it's time to, like, that's the, that's my, you know, my – that's what my next question to you guys is not even a question. Like this is what these guys do for a living. What is, what has been, I would love to be a fly on these, in these offensive meetings and see what was, what has been going on in seven weeks. What have the talks have been like here? Hey, Hey fellas, good to see everybody. This is what we're going to do. Like what is, what, is, what, what kind of discussions are being talked? Like we're embarrassed watching it. If you're a member of that, you have to be embarrassed. There has to be a pride gene, and I know there is. You know what I mean? But it's like, my goodness gracious. Yeah, Ian says, how many balls did we throw behind the line of scrimmage? We have a number. Well, well, in the last, seven, in the last seven, yeah, in the last seven weeks or just tonight? <laughs> just tonight. <laughs> what up, Ian? We know him. <laughs> no, yeah, I know you. Uh, yeah, yeah, we know that guy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's too many. It's at least it's at least it's a so handful. predictable too, right? I mean, how many times? I mean, how many times do, does Gainwell go out of the backfield and you know the ball's going right to him? Again, we don't attack the middle. And Nothing. again, and again, everything's I, boundary. When we get again, in trouble, everything is boundary. And why? I mean, that's the problem, and that's what we're going to find out if the coaching staff can can help change that. Because Nick, right why now, is everything. The, why is everything outside, Nick? Why is nothing across the middle? I think I have that answer. We might. Well, I don't think my quarterback. He doesn't see the field well. He doesn't see the yeah. field well. So I mean, that's where there's a lot of congestion. You know, what I mean, if you, if, I guess that, I guess that would be me once again trying to be a detective. You know, like there, he didn't stay at Holiday Inn Express last. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of mess in the middle. You know what I mean? So uh, it doesn't mean that you know that, that you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying, like that's you got to be able to you got to be able to step up in the pocket. And and throw seam routes and and throw and 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 throw those post plays that you know we saw tonight at least once. <laughs> yeah, you know, look, God forbid, look a safety off. Hey, God forbid, let's look a safety off. 
Oh, wait, you do that in this league? <laughs> it seems like the only time he does it, it was when it's designed to. Yeah. You notice that? Like yep. you'll see him do it, and you're like, oh, that was good. And you're like, ah, it's designed. It's designed for you to pump fake it. Right. Yeah. So then it's just, almost like back to Chip Kelly when we're running the RPO with like Nick Foles, right? Where you know it's designed to what he's gonna do with the ball. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's designed art. You're gonna hold it in there, but you're handing it off. It, it's just I mean, yeah, we saw it today, right? The one third down. We, we had two guys on one side of the field. He gives one look. Meanwhile, there's a guy, you know, behind the other defender on the other side. We never even get there. Right. Never even get to that side of the field. Cottonball says, here's a theory. What if the players lost on purpose because they don't want Nick anymore? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. That'd be aggressive. Right. That's aggressive. Wow. I, don't know. I didn't never, never thought of that. No, no, they, they would never. It, never it definitely can't come out that they did that, though. <laughs> they, would, they couldn't even keep a secret. An eight men out, you know what I mean? With the, yeah. the 1919 White Sox. So there's no there's no chance of that. And guys are always trying to get paid. You know, nobody's trying to look bad, just like Shoeless Joe Jackson. Nobody's trying to look bad. You know what I mean? So this is this is what it was. I'm not saying they didn't lose it. I'm not saying that they don't want them. All right, but that's that's not the answer. <laughs> I love it. Love love the tin foil hat, but I, that's not that's not without that's not what we just watched. You know, we watched bad football, bad coaching, bad culture, bad bad locker room. We we that's what we watched for the last eight weeks. Just we watched we actually witnessed the worst team in football the last eight weeks. It's amazing. <laughs> Mike Collins, we were 0-11 on third down before we converted our first, which was a pass interference. Yep. Pathetic. Not good enough. It still says 0 for, it still says 0 for 9 and 0 for 2 on fourth. So oh yeah, 0 for 11 on third and fourth. <laughs> Mo says Jalen needs those goggles all summer to read the pocket. Yeah, he needs to get better. Uh Jose, I don't know why they're not they, they are probably telling him. That's the problem. Right? But now they paid him. So if something isn't working, you're going to blame the coaching staff, right? Rightfully so. I get it, right? And then they're going to move on, and, and you're going to see if somebody can get it out of them. Ian says, I would love to see the success numbers we had across the middle tonight. Smitty got a lot of his numbers between the numbers. Sure and we got PAI running the slant behind a blitz, which is basic football. Yep. Stuff you guys do at the high school level. You know what I mean? That's what it is. Yeah. Like I mean, if, we're sitting here on our couch screaming about it. it and I'm a moron. I'm tired of it for seven weeks. Yeah. You know, I don't sit here drawing up game plans. Yeah, and that's why it goes from 20%, 25%, 20%, 15%, to 10%, to 100%. You should be yeah. fired. That's it. It's gone. That's it. You, 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 know, you hired these guys. You allowed this to happen. The one move you made was on defense on, uh, with, with a superior unit, right? Never made a move. On offense, <laughs> with all the talent, if yeah. this was if this was a seesaw, right? The seesaw was here because all the talent is on offense. I mean, you know, the better talent is on offense. <laughs> all right, come on, Robert. Do you guys think it's more X's and O's or culture? Pick one. Uh, X's and O's. I'm yeah, I mean, Nick might just not know what he's doing. I mean, like you know, like you well, said, <laughs> you know, uh, there's you know, that, like, there's this, you know. If you guys forget, I'm Shane sure you Dyke, remember. You know, we saw the success that that Shane had this year. So, you know, he, Nick might just been masquerading as a head coach last year. You know, with some with some good coordinators. Real truth says both are still on the podium after the Niners game. He proclaimed that they figured out the Eagles and wrote a blueprint on how to beat them. Every team since that game played the birds the same way. Agreed. And look at our, and look at our record. The Niners really one wore win. one went. Yep. The Niners wore funeral attire and kicked yeah. our ass and buried us. So they, they truly might have. So now if there's a blueprint, then that worries me about coaching, but it also worries about my quarterback's blueprint. Yeah. Because from that game on, he's stumped. So I'm guessing, I think it takes two to tango in this league. We've talked about this, the importance of the connection between the head coach and your quarterback. I think it's disconnected right now. Yeah, no, you're right. I think it's big time disconnected. We got to find somebody. If we're going to keep him, which is Jalen Hurts, we got to find somebody that connects to him and but, brings yeah, the best out no, of him. I agree. I agree. But because he, he, he has, has showed 
he can play at a high level, right? Yeah. Let's give him that. You can have the best pitching coach in the world. If, if you're tipping pitches, you're going to get your titties lit. You know? no, no, no question about <laughs> it. Uh, absolutely. So that's why it's like hard to blame it all on Nick. Mm-hmm. That's why it's a combo. Like if you're asking me today, I'll find a way to move on from both, right? There, there's guys in this draft that I like a lot. So like I'll move on. I ain't scared. I'm just I'm just talking shit. No, I know you are. I know you are. I really don't want to go that route. Definitely you know not. I, mean? I don't want to go that route. You know, I want him to hopefully be the guy. So now it comes down, can you find the right guy that connects to him, that reaches him, that pulls out the most out of him, that can coach him up, that can be hard on him, right? Because Nick, you know Nick by now, right? And there's nothing wrong with a player's coach, babe. Yeah. Right? I think you got to be a tweener. In today's sports, in today's world, you got to know how to toe the line of both. I'm not saying that's right. But you got to be able to, you know, you got to be able to put your arm around a guy and be, and be you know, a player's coach. And you got to be able to get up in somebody's, you know what, too. Yeah. You got to have the respect to do both. Like you can be a player's coach all you want. When you, when you walk in a room, play, players respond to you. So there ain't a right way and a wrong way if you walk in a room and you get the most out of your guys, right? Like there's ways that we believe in, but there's also other ways that can work. But the respect has to be there, right? Mm-hmm. Guys got to believe in what you're coming up with every week to make them successful. Because you know players are looking for excuses. You know they are. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. That's where I'm at. You know, I'm at the point where, you know, I need somebody that can get the best out of people. That can raise the level of maybe a GM that's not, the best, but that will make some splash moves to try to help us win, right? I need that. And Jalen probably has been hurt at Keys. So, again, I'm not moving on from Jalen. I was more joking about that. But I'm not moving on from him. But he, he's got to be better. It, and it's, yeah, I mean, it, it's tough to move on from him anyway. Not after the year he had the year before. You got to ride it out now. You got to give it another year or two to see if you can bounce no, I'm, back. No, I'm just saying from a contract standpoint, it's tough to move that. Well, Ian, I mean, yes, the question if there's a blueprint, it, you know, circle right back and ask yourself if you got a player at the quarterback position that's a couple trick pony, right? If he's hurt, whatever the reason may be, and he's a couple trick pony and he can't make every throw in the in, in the tree, what, what do you got to run then? <laughs> Is it, does it become a blueprint on you? Yeah, it, 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 it this does. If you got it, if because in this league, even more so. I mean, how much tape do you watch at the high school level, right? A ton. So when you fact you know, I'm not talking to you like you're dumb. Like the amount of tape these guys watch, and if you can find a tendency, and you can find be like, dude, he won't make this throw, and you can cheat. Think about that. He, I ain't scared of him making that throw. Only place he's beating me is here and here and here. He's only gonna beat me over the top here, over the top there on the on the outs, right? And 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 but he ain't gonna beat me in slants and those types of throws. So if I play him knowing that, I can adjust and roll coverages, and now I got a blueprint. And no matter what they call, if he's predictable, hypothetically, then your whole offense is predictable. Yeah, you ever hear him audible? No. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what I was. I was I've been saying it for in. a couple of weeks. I was, yeah, no, I was, I was just checking in because you know, a lot, hot, not, not, not a hot, no, lot no. of hot mics. You know, usually NFL is loaded with hot mics, and I never, I never hear anything. I never see you any hand gestures. I, you know, not saying it doesn't happen. I don't, I don't look that closely at it, but you know, as, as much as we, you know, you know, made fun of Peyton for. You know, all that's, you know, <laughs> just for the verbiage and stuff <laughs> and stuff he did. You know, it was amazing to watch him and Brady and, 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 it's, it's and, nice to watch. and Favre and all those guys. I'm watching like, CJ Stroud. Point, point right here. I'm watching CJ right Stroud audible more. Hey, right than here. Hurts does. Yeah. Right? I'm watching CJ Stroud. I'm watching young quarterbacks do it more than, than my guy. You know, Josh, Allen, the end. Josh Allen today, 38. He yelled 38. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, Most well, guys do. Most, yeah. Like a quarterback does sweeps. You know what I mean? Quarterbacks do. I don't know why we don't. He doesn't. Uh, Ian said we either watch stubbornness or stupidity, and that's why I give you the third option, A. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm tossing you a third option. 
where he is of the blueprint. <laughs> I hate saying that. And again, I fired Nick yesterday. So I, I can, you, Nick, can, you see you later, baby. See you later. Because I got to find somebody that can get it out of him. Shane showed it. That Shane's a QB whisper, right? You find out guys are QB whispers. Didn't make the playoffs, but he got the most out of Gardner Minshew. Oh, right. The fact so, that they were in it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and now Gardner knows his offense. So there's similarities. There's help there. But he showed at least he's a QB whisper, right? And if I got a head coach that can, can they, I'm hiring a head coach to be, to be able to whisper to my quarterback. Anyway, think about it. He needs to, because at the end of the day, then it'll, it'll go it will go elsewhere. That respect will, right? But like he's got to he's got to be able to whisper a little bit. Where I don't I think Nick lost the whisper. Yeah. Too. Because I feel like he's just gonna whisper like a dork. And I and I think the dorkness and the t-shirts and the cockiness, I think it rubs guys the wrong way too. No. Well, of course it no, does. No, I, I, no, I agree with you. And like I said, having not been in there, we don't know the answer to these questions. All right, but that's what we do, and we bring up interesting points, you know. Does you know, sometimes when guys get paid, does the whisper go go in one ear and out the other? You know, what I mean, I'm not saying it should or it did, but you know, you get paid a lot of money. It's like, yeah, I don't know about the whisper anymore. I'm good. I got this. You got us to the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Like, I got this. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's definitely possible. It is, you, just, you just know that you just know that the guys are always looking for the next one too, though, right? You know what I mean. So, it, you know, if you do it too early, to your point, if you do it too early in the contract, you ain't getting another one. You know, if you're stubborn and not willing to to learn, yeah, that's that going to get out. That's going to get out. Yeah, that that would be something that I would hope, I would hope I'd hear this summer. I don't hope to hear it, but you know, you expect to hear it. Now, Bill says, "Question time: Are the starters locked up next year?" Um, I think the majority of your guys are like a lot of your key guys right now. There's probably going to be moves when you talk about Slay, when uh, you know, Bradbury won't be here, those will be some other things, but there's a lot of guys back per se. I don't think it think everybody thinks they're safe though. Yeah, like, that's that's no, no disrespect, right? I just think you got guys that nobody's 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 getting them going. There's no, there's like what's going right in seven weeks. So when when you're expecting it and there ain't nobody that can change the course of a game when you're not getting that. That's where you're at. Like, I don't, I mean, yeah, that's the effort right. thing. Yeah. But the effort thing to me is on coach. That's, yeah. That's And that's where I would, I would echo everything you just said. Like dude's a, an award-winning um, analyst. Um, it was a hell of a player and I, and I love Ryan Clark. So and I'm not saying, he, saying he's wrong. I would just tend to disagree and I'm nobody in, in, you know, just with that last line, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure he showed the breakdown and all that stuff. They're just, you know, lack of, you know, uh, lack of effort. I don't know if that's from thinking you're safe because you got a spot on the team. I think everybody knows that the NFL was a revolving door. You know what I mean? And anybody that, you know, watched that defense for the duration of the year, let alone the last eight weeks and tonight would even imagine, would even remotely think that they were safe. Wow, that would be something. But like I said, maybe he knows stuff we don't. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying, like, I would just say that would be mind-boggling to me. You know what I mean? Like, we know that this league is like, you know what I mean? Like, what have you done for me lately? You know what I mean? I understand guys have contracts and stuff, but you can't put that on film tonight and think you're safe. Anybody in that locker room. Yeah, around the league, too. <laughs> Yeah, you know, around the lake. You know, I know a guy like Kevin Byard wanted more money from Tennessee. They weren't willing to pay him. Yeah, so, who, who's that? Yeah, I Vrabel. see him all year. Yeah, Vrabel smart. I think he missed another tackle. Yeah, good luck. Uh, good luck getting that money. Like now. I said, we always try. Like you said, they, I, you know, tip of the cap for trying, but there's always a reason. You know, unless somebody, you know, punched their head coach in the mouth, that there's always a reason that somebody gets let go. You know what I mean? And sometimes it is about finances. I get that, but you know. Tennessee knew what they had in Baird, and uh, and and obviously it was a hail mary with Shaq Leonard. We know that, <laughs> yeah, we knew that. Yeah, and I don't think this is like major. Like when you talk about free agents, that's not like it's not a killer outside of like Kelsey. Obviously, you would want to have you want to get Fletch back for a year. We'll see about BGA, but the rest of those names, are like, see ya. 
Yeah, I mean, for the most part, like, uh, see you later. Thanks for stopping by. Outside of maybe DeAndre, he'd probably like to have him back, but you know, we'll see. I, if I'm him, I don't, I don't stay here. Yeah, after, right. After, I mean, after this, yeah. Why would you? <laughs> after this, I mean, I'm you think about that, him. right? We he started the year so hot, and then yeah. what? I mean, not 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 that it matters anyway, but what? McCaffrey set the won the rushing record at fourteen hundred yards. Yep. DeAndre got a thousand, and we barely used him. Imagine if we used him. He might have ran for sixteen hundred yards. He could have. And what, and what, is that, what does that offense look like if you have a running back that runs for sixteen hundred yards? Yeah, seriously. That's why I was shocked when I saw with the uh, show ponies on the outside. Rasheed, How are you going to be that dominant and, I, and stop you? I know, and I love Rasheed White. I was shocked to see he only ran for nine ninety. I mean, I know he can't. He probably caught another nine hundred. You know, because they use him out of the yeah. backfield. You know what I mean? Uh, that was no, shocking, I mean, shocking to me. And I would say I would try to bring back Swift at all those other names, right? Um, but we'll see. I mean, we have a first round pick and two seconds, and you got to go defense, obviously. And you expect them to be linebackers and and secondary help. And you would hope it's that got to be secondary. Got to yeah. be. I mean, I mean, first it's got to be. Line, I got to get some linebackers here too. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously a combo. Now you have some young guys in the back end that you drafted, and it, they seem to like. Obviously, they played some minutes this year. Yeah. So I mean, now you're just going to take the best available, and we'll get there. But you know, it, it's it's got to be an emphasis on a linebacker minimum, right? You obviously have the Kobe Dean coming back. They're gonna they're gonna hope they catch lightning in a bottle, but he'll be hurt by week four, <laughs> right? So at the end of the day, you got to draft another one now, right? The, the the big problem with a lot of these veterans and stuff like that is like when you when you talk about Slay, you talk about Bradbury, you talk about whoever else, even Lane Johnson, right? Uh, they're dead cap money because of the way their contracts are structured. Yeah, huge, huge. Like Slay's, for example, is thirty five million. What next Brad, year? The dead cap for next year. Yeah. Yeah. So he's staying here. Bradbury 17, right? So it's a little different for him. Well, than... it's still not though, Greg, because but it's you know, not. That, no, you're right. It's not but that goes to Ryan Clark, though. Mm-hmm. Right? That that's the thing where I'll agree with Ryan Clark. Yeah. All right. You got you got 17 million dead cap. You know that. You're not an idiot. They can't move on from you. They already yeah, slayed you... 35 million. You're a loser. You watch him tackle tonight. He's a loser. Okay. I'll continue to say that. Okay. He ain't you no know, big play, nothing. All right. So you know, I'm sorry he got hurt. I don't want to see him ever get hurt, right? I'm not looking for that. But, I mean, he he's not good enough, man. And a $35 million cap, dead cap, like you're a damn quarterback, right? You better be a game changer. You better be Sauce Gardner. Like, you better take away a whole side of the damn field. That's a, yeah. that's a horrific contract. That's a scared contract from Howie Roseman. That's what that is. You're concerned about your back half coming into this year, and instead of just signing one of them, you got caught with your pants down. And you need to bring back both because you couldn't bring back TJ Edwards or Kaiser White or CJ GJ. Because of the first, yep, because of the first domino, you yep. need to pay your quarterback. All right. It all goes yep. back to that. All right. And there you are. You're in the situation you're in, mainly because of that. You lost a lot of key pieces. Darius Slay, like, with all due respect, is a piece of shit. He's a he's a he's a he's a me guy. He's selfish. And I have no time for him. And 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 again, Bill said that Ryan Clark showed a play from Slay tonight, and it it was totally unacceptable. And I can oh, imagine, yeah, his, his attempt to tackle go, uh, what Gordon or or whoever that rookie is on that uh, on that touchdown. Oh yeah, listen, when Maddox and and Ringo. I'm or, sure, yeah, or, I'm or, sure. People sit color. here. People sit here and want to kiss the ring, Greg. Right? People sit around and want to kiss people's goddamn ring. Well, if a guy in, in front of your eyes is playing soft as you know what. Why are we going to continue to act like he's a star? He ain't a star no more. You can tweet about everybody, and you could be a social media guy, and you could be a solid corner at this point in your career. But don't – like, that's where I get I get bothered by guys how they walk around like, like you did something. What would you do? Like, what would you do in your career that's so great? It's so I mean, game-changing. It's, it's just like in life. I, I, I agree with you, Tom. It's just like in life. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. <laughs> Believe him. Yeah. Believe, believe him. him. I'll say it, guys. Well, yeah, we have more sound bites than he has plays. 
<laughs> and Bradbury's the Bradbury's down is worse than him. Like he needs to stop playing. So yeah, again, those two guys, those two got a dead cap. The dead caps are important. Now, is there anybody else, Craig, that we can think of that we would move on from? That what what's AJ Brown dead cap? 42, 43 mil, 42 and a yeah. half. So the guy who reported that is a jackass because that ain't going nowhere. Right. So now it comes down Super to track's the running slow. I'm trying to figure out like, like Slay's got an out after 25 or after 24, there's an out for Slay. After. Yeah. After. But, but it's still, but it's still a 14 million ca- uh, dead cat. Right. So well, we're, we're in, we're going into 24. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, he's got to play another year yeah. with the 35 million. I'm not worried about two years. Right, yeah. you're thinking about next year. You've seen enough of Slay. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm trying to, <laughs> like I said, Spochak's running cool, slow because I'm trying to pull up where where guys have like outs in their contract. Right? You yeah, know? I don't know how the heck you're getting rid of both of them. I don't know how you're even getting rid of one of those guys. Oh. Slay or Bradbury with those kind of dead caps. Now, if you trade them, do you got to hit? There's a dead cap hit. We get it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no way. There's no way around it. So it, they'll be ran back. Uh, I mean, you cannot run. You can't. I hear you, buddy. At some point, what is the difference between you know wasting money? You can, you can't look at Bradbury again. You can't, no. I think uh, Bradbury. I think Bradbury. They would take the dead cap. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because Slay's okay. guaranteed to be sometimes back. You, yeah, sometimes you got to eat some fucking shit, fucking oatmeal. You know what I mean? Like, there's no Bradbury should never put on an Eagles uniform again. Should never put on another uniform again. Just. Walk away. So no. should have put on Eagles uniform. Well, what should... happened to him? Yeah. What happened to him? You know, tonight I saw him get carted off at the end. And now he got hit like in the side or the back. I want to say he's out for most start of next year. Though. Like, do he die on the field? Um, yeah, it could be restructuring, as Josh says. Well, We're not there sure. yet. But um, again, but restructuring Bradbury, just keeps... Brad... Yeah, go ahead, Greg. No, I was saying restructuring is all fine and good, but it, all it does is just keep kicking the can down the road. It does. Right, that's that's the problem we're in with all of our vets is how he's great at restructuring and freeing up money for in the moment, but all you're doing is kicking the can down the road. Like Lane Johnson, forty five million dollar late head uh, dead cat. Yeah, that's insane. Ain't, go- ain't going nowhere. PJ says he probably didn't want to keep playing. <laughs> I thought the same thing. <laughs> oh my back, I'm done. My neck, done. get my the cart. Get my neck. Yeah, watch it be about me. Get the cart. Everybody come over like it's my last game I'll ever play. Well, that's probably an out. It's just a shame. Oh. Bradbury's only 30 years old. How do you listen, fall that, far, that far off at 30? Well, listen, he, he, listen, you can't, you can't like cover up the fact that he's been brutal just alone in like trying to like make a tackle, right? Like the common basic football stuff, right? You know, yeah, you no, hope, you're not, and yeah, yeah, absolutely. You would hope a new defensive coordinator or whatever can like play to some guy's strengths, maybe. I don't know, but I got yeah. some bad news for you guys. Bradbury's probably gonna be back too. Well, I mean, that's what Bill said with his exclamation points, and we love you, Bill. So, <laughs> I, and we're not disagreeing with you. I'm saying, and sometimes, yeah, no, I, I hear you. I would just cut bait. I understand there's financial aspects to things, but if you watch tonight, which we've watched all year, and you thought, yeah, I'm gonna, I mean, let's bring this guy back. I don't give a shit what pile of money you're eating. You know what I mean? You eat that shit. You eat, you eat that shit sandwich, and you tell them to fucking kick rocks. Yeah, you ain't trading him. Nobody wants him. He's a bum. You just cut him. That's it. What was said, Mike? What was said? Sorry, he said you watch your mouth. You don't say that. Movie line, or did we say something? Uh, Mike says, "Can you move Slate to safety?" I don't know. Yeah, and last year we were thanking the Giants for for us getting Brad back, but then we watched his play uh, get worse. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do you, what do you like? You know, it's great. These guys had great years last year. That's why we went to a Super Bowl. Uh, there is Super Bowl hangovers. It's a real thing, especially when you lose. It's not an excuse, but those things do happen. You know, I listen again. I'm at ten percent. The Knicks back. But this time next week, if he's still here, I'm not going to be, like, shocked, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, what are they doing? Because at the end, Jeffrey Mike, he's going to – tonight he might be, like, gone. Tomorrow morning he might reflect, right? He might He's going to talk to players. 
He's going to get feedback from the guys that he trusts in that locker room, starting with Kelsey and starting with Fletcher Cox. If we don't think that, if we don't think that Jeffrey Lurie isn't getting the get feedback from those guys, we're not thinking. You know what I mean? There's guys yeah. that have been lifers here that you know he's giving them lifelong contracts essentially. So he's going to talk to those guys, and they are here right. or not, and they are yeah. not right, especially BG if he's here or not. So if BG's like, hey, I think he lost the locker room. You know, if they if they say that to Jeffrey, then I think he's gone, and maybe he did. Like it looks like he did. You know what I mean? But but we'll find out. Yeah, I mean, we again we tried not to jump to those conclusions because the season wasn't over. But now now that we watch this stink pot, it's tough not to see it on the sidelines. You know, it's tough not to see it. it, it it's it's tough not to see the disconnect between even just the players. Uh, you know that 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 was there last year, and 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 again again, I'm not throwing it all on these guys, but our core our core group of guys, our core group of veterans and guys, were all back. Oh. Yeah, we we lost some you know pieces here and there, but that core group of 10, 12 guys was here from last year. Well, the Nick the Nick essentially. You know, he did it the one time in the presser where it's like, oh, they they handled it, right? Mm-hmm. Did, did he think because of what he had coming back that he could let his foot off the gas? Because if you're asking me, that's what it looks like. He might have. I'm, look, I'm looking at a head football coach that let his foot off the damn gas. Right? They thought that his veterans and all these guys were going to lead for him and, and A, B, C, and D, and here we are. Here we are. It's another, it's another thing you can think about. There's a lot of things. A lot of things, but that locker room shot right now. Because when you don't come out and hit hit people, yeah. right? And you know you don't want to do that kind of stuff. I mean, you don't want to tackle on the open field. See you later. Just arm tackle city. Oh. Just lunging at guys, like not even trying to wrap up. I, I know sweeps brought it up, and 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 I, and I absolutely and agree, agree with him. You know, and and I know we don't tackle enough in practice anymore. Right, or or training camp, you know, because everyone's so afraid of getting hurt, and I understand it. But the 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 sport you play demands you be ready to tackle. Yep. And if you don't, you look like the Eagles defense tonight. Yep. I can't outrun anybody, and I could have outrun those guys. I mean, like I said, it comes down to professional sports. At some time, at some point, there's got to be accountability. All right. So like kids are watching, you know what I mean? So the same thing we talk about when we, when we watch the Phillies, right? you can't get a punt down. Well, okay. So it's not what we do. And it's pro, it's pro baseball. It's not what we do. Get the damn punt down. Right. You know, it's fundamentals. All right. And tackling is football one-on-one. I mean, like you take everything out, take all the plays out, you take everything else out of it. All right. And it's, Blocking and tackling. <laughs> all right. That's the game that was invented, you know, all that time, all the all the all those years ago. <laughs> all right. You got a blocking guy, you got a tackle guy. And we didn't see we didn't see much of, of either tonight. Either. No. <laughs> Nothing at all. Let alone the, the you know the actual in-game stuff that we watched tonight, right? Like, why are we taking that field goal or the extra point off the board? Oh, my God. What does what, what is, what is five do that six does it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Every, every, and then everybody. when you get to safety, and, and everybody's then when like, you get to safety, you still would have been within a score. That's what I said. And everybody's like, oh, well, it works 96% of the time. I said, yeah, like Sex Panther. You know what I mean? It works. It doesn't every, matter. It doesn't matter. It's 16-10. You keep, the, keep it on the board, right? Once again, you're trying to be the smartest guy in the room and now think everything. And then the fourth and five, all right, I get it. You're down. You need yeah. to go for it. Why are we taking a home run shot? Yep. Why are we not running a, a seven-yard router or Double. crossers across the middle? Because yep. you know what was wide open? The middle of the field. Oh, of course. Well, you threw in a double. The middle field was wide open. It had to be. You threw in a double coverage. You threw to Devontae in double, to double coverage. Because he was and, the flavor, he he was the flavor of of the night. You know what I mean? And, like, I'm, yeah. and I'm never, <laughs> I'm never bash throwing to AJ or Devonte at all times, right? You know what I mean? Like, go for it. But like, Dallas came open in the middle of the field. Even if you know, as they showed on the on the broadcast, even if just Devonte just turned and stopped once he got to the ten yard line, I mean, touched would have been in first down. Then we could keep going. We just, just the, the just <sighs> mind boggling plays just in today's game. Let alone. What we've watched the last eight weeks. Yeah. 
Oh, or sorry. hell, all 19 weeks. Because let's be real, it's been there all year. They just got masked by wins. Greg, you can read that. Mm. Uh, Lane Johnson just said, we have the same team that we had at 10 and 1. And there will be changes if I'm going to play here now. Or if I'm going to play here. Wow. I guess Lane's, I guess, I guess that means Nick's going. <laughs> Maybe he might have already met with Jeffrey. Lane, I know, partner. <laughs> right? Yeah, something. He gone. Because <laughs> I, I can't imagine, it, yeah, it, for a guy like that, right, and you know the warrior that he is, yeah. it, it's got to be, it's got to be mind-boggling. I, I can't, you know what I mean? Like, to be the warrior that he is, just, and, and and like Jason Kelsey as well, right? Like to sit there and and this is this is the way you go out. This yeah. is your last eight weeks of your career as a Philadelphia Eagle, potentially. And that's what you're saying. We're you deserve about, better than that. When you're talking about, like you said, I'm not saying we're about- gonna cut the nets down, but win a game. Go 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 lose to Detroit next week. No one. We're not having this conversation if we if we win the night. I don't care what it looked like. And we go lose to Detroit next week. We're not having this overall conversation. We're going to be pissed off. We're going to be upset that the season's over, right? We're probably going to bring up Nick just because of the whole year. But ultimately, you made, you won a playoff game and you made it to the second round. That's pretty tough to get rid of at the end of the day. Now, you come out this week, get embarrassed like we did, and then you have comments like this from Lane. Yeah, that's pretty damning. Yeah. I know he has no control of social media, but like you said, <clears throat> uh, and, and, you know, we know all pretty much every great wide receiver is, you know, air quote, a diva. We get all that, you know what I mean? But it's just not a good look for AJ Brown this week. You know, like you delete your account, your, you know, your Twitter account, whatever, you know, you're not at the game. Um, you know, they announced like on, on Thursday or what is it? Yeah. Or, or Friday morning, whatever it was, Thursday or Friday, that, you know, with with three days to go that, that he was out. You know, I'm not saying the inj- injury isn't significant. You know what I mean? He did walk off um, in Giant Stadium, which doesn't always mean everything. I get that. But yeah. um, I don't know. Just, it's just not a good look. You know what I mean? And that Lane could be alluding to that stuff too. Um, there's just could be. When, when guys, you know, I'm sure he's talking about the, you know, about the coaching staff, but uh, these guys, I, I'm sure that's a tired act for everybody in that locker room. You know what I mean? Like, you know, he, you know, and I'm not, you know, I know he's, he's going to be back. I'm not saying that, you know, you, you got to get rid of him. You know, he's a tremendous talent, but sometimes, you know, that baggage ain't worth it. All right. And then once again, a guy like Vrabel showed that. Like, here you go, man. Just, you know, like, it, and the Eagles got a steal. And we said, whoa, how, how he stole him, man. That was amazing. And he did, in essence. You know what I mean? But Tennessee was probably like, eh, you're going to have him, dude. You know what I mean? He's a special, special talent. Yeah. But there's other stuff going on behind the doors. All right. That Vrabel wanted no parts of where a guy like Sirianni just gets bullied. Right, you know, for his lunch money, you know, what I mean, like he didn't, you know, he just they don't respect him, maybe, and he doesn't have control, he doesn't have that, you know, that culture like some of these other respected guys, you know, like a Tomlin or a Vrabel, you know, what I mean, you know, like Tomlin kept AB, we know AB as, as you know, has lost his mind in the last couple of years. We, I get that, right, but you didn't hear he was fine in Pittsburgh, he was fine in Pittsburgh, you didn't hear a word, you know, what I mean, up until the end. When, when it was time for him to go, you know, when he missed one thing and he showed up in a fur coat and it was time. That was as soon as that happened, they went, see you later, AB. <laughs> you know, you're now dividing this team. You're going. Lane Johnson also said, sometimes you have to run and find out. And we found out. <sighs> I'm trying to find if I can find the quote. <clears throat> Which one? The one Bill posted? Yeah. I haven't been able to find it yet, but he did talk, so it's it's somewhere. But doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're gonna be in the off season mode. Obviously, on this show on Sunday nights, we'll be getting into a lot more Sixers, Flyers, getting us some of that action here in the Philly sports world. So we got all that coming up. Flyers are playing great hockey, so we'll get into them mm-hmm. as the weeks come up here. 
should, should be excited um, to have a hockey team that sort of fits this city, which is always great. And, you know, Sixers obviously with a, with a good win today with the big fella back. Yeah. Um, he did his thing. So we'll, we'll segue a little there. But I don't know if you guys got nothing else. I think I left it all on the table today, but we'll love or the floor or the mic. Left it all out on the mic today. At least a bunch of, at least a couple of us did. We tried to because they can't didn't. say that about our football team. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Lane Johnson hinted that Jason Kelsey said this would be his last game. Yeah, that was, yeah, I think Sweeps mentioned that that was a goodbye walk yeah. around yeah. the, uh, around the complex and which is good because i don't want I, i'm done with camp jerkins at guard get him back to center where he doesn't have to move <laughs> yeah that could matter <laughs> all yeah, right boys. that's gonna be a tough one that's gonna be a tough yeah, one because he's still so good that's a killer i know that, yes. that, and that's the part that sucks is he's still so good no i just wanted to have it bill i just wanted to read it off again but it's all good. Pitchers and catchers in one month, too. Yep. <laughs> right for another collapse. So this has been a great disagree. Team. Been a great disagree. Eagle season's over. It was quick. A little too quick. I don't like that the NFL season's almost coming to an end. Not a fan of that. It's depressing. You know, I almost wish they went to March. <laughs> Get us out of the cold a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> lead, lead us in. But now... Uh, Listen, regardless, it's been a great show. It's a great venting with everybody. Yeah, thank uh, you all. Dave, I'll get into my thoughts. Uh, if you tune back in to A2D Wednesday nights, you know, I'll get into the AJ and some of my thoughts on on him, and I'm sure other guys will as well. So, in the up, Bill, we have Sixers and Celtics to yell and scream about. And Martian, how quick oh – yeah, when did the Sixers let us down? How does that happen? Well, probably in the second round. So, but at least we have a good coach yet. We have two good coaches in the other sports. We know that. Just, so, I'm just gonna that's say, exciting. Like, and I think Greg would admit that. I think Greg's biggest problem was that the young maybe wasn't a young guy's coach, and that's where that's where the Flyers were. I don't, I don't think you know to defend Greg. I don't think he was ever not saying he wasn't a good coach. He just thought maybe he wasn't a good fit. I'll speak for Greg right there. Correct. But and I love Torts, and it wasn't about he's being. Changed. Yeah, it wasn't about being wrong. It's just he's tough. He's tough. He changed. And that's, and that's what this city needs. They need tough guys, right? Nick Nurse is tough. And I don't know about the other two guys. You know what I mean? Topper's been around for 100 years. He's a player's guy. I get it. I can do it Sirianni, out, Sirianni has zero toughness. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no it sweeps. You're absolutely right. That was my, you know, that hey, was, Bill. I guess, my biggest gripe. See you, Billy. Thanks, brother. That was, I guess, my biggest gripe was he just the way he handled the young guys throughout his career. Yep. But he has absolutely changed his tune. He is still tough. And he's still hard on the guys, but he's changed it. He, he's he's mellowed out a little bit in that. So yeah, absolutely. I'm uh I'm I'm on board now. Yes, sir. Hard not to be, right? Yeah, and they're playing well, right? Yeah. They're fun to watch. That's the thing. That's all we ask for. All right. Every night, you know you're gonna get a great effort from the Flyers. Well, win or lose. That's that's all you ask for as a fan, especially somebody in, in this area. Yeah. That's all you can ask for. You just want effort. Right? In any sport. So great show, boys. Yes, awesome. Good work, boys. Eagles stink, but oh, we'll continue God. to talk about them through the off season. We'll see if it's a rebuild. We'll see if it's a retool. We'll see who gets fired. A lot to go over. Yeah. A lot to go over. So agree, disagree. H U D radio. We thank you all on your way out. Hit the like, subscribe. Follow, and we were brought to you by our doc. Make them yours, Dr. Paul Vidal, Specialized Physical Therapy, LLC, location in Burlington, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Find them on the web, specializedphysicaltherapy.com. For Greg Wachovic, Nick Delgazzo, I'm Tom Arnone. Everybody out there, we love you. Fly, Eagles, fly. Go, Birds. On to the Sixers. On to the Flyers. On the pitchers and catchers. Let's go.